Hello, my name is Mark Warren. I am the present District 37 Governor of Middle America Ruritan, comprising clubs in the eastern part of the state of Kansas. I've been asked to describe a successful project our district has done to grow a struggling Ruritan club in our area of the United States. Ruritan came to our area of the United States on June 23, 1966, with the first Kansas club established in Bronson. My home club at Uniontown is located six miles east of Bronson. It was chartered one year later in 1967. Ruritan has grown steadily in Kansas over the last couple of decades, but like many of your districts, have seen a membership decline over the last few years. I am in my third year of being district governor for this district. Upon taking the lieutenant governor, then governor position, a recommendation I have, and again, this is my personal recommendation, is that you probably need to be at the position of district governor for at least two years instead of one to really be effective. Because if you are new to it, you need the first year to visit all of your clubs, in my case, 12, and assess the individual climates of each club's community they serve. Using the first year, you can then pinpoint your weaker clubs and develop a membership growth strategy with the struggling clubs during the second year. I wish one solution for growth would work for all clubs, but as many of you already know, communities are different. I have found that a dedicated district cabinet with a good growth and development person and zone governors are probably the key to success. You as governor may have ideas, but putting the several heads of your cabinet together help to make a plan work. Here in middle America, our 12 clubs are located in towns with schools and towns without schools anymore. Surprisingly, many of our strongest clubs are in the towns without schools. So because of this, we developed a plan to begin with the clubs that have school districts. In our case, that is four of our clubs. Ideas we used are not new, as Glenn Broadwater and Calvin Shelton presented many of them in a PowerPoint at one of the national convention workshops I recently attended. So if you two individuals are watching this presentation, I wanna thank you both for sharing your ideas and encourage all districts to incorporate these ideas as they really do work. All we do in Middle America is modify those ideas a little bit. Cherokee, Kansas is a club that was started in 1973. It is located at the farthest south of any of our clubs in the district. Cherokee is a town of 700 residents. Pittsburgh, Kansas, which is a town of 20,000 residents with the Kansas Regents University, is roughly 10 miles to the east. And another town, Weir, Kansas, also population 700, lies halfway between Cherokee and Pittsburgh. The open house idea Calvin and Glenn described at the convention intrigued me. But how do you get the word out to the community about an open house and include as many people as possible? Cherokee Club is in the center of a unified school district that has maintained their school system that has seen a drastic drop off in membership from charter strength to just three members remaining in a short period of time. After I found out what happened, I contacted the District 37 cabinet and had a meeting deciding that we were going to do whatever it takes to not lose this club or any more clubs. For many of our communities, the Ruritan Club, especially in communities that have lost their school, is the last remaining civic organization that gives the community an identity. And some of them, unfortunately, have lost that now. District 37 Cabinet decided we would work together and start by com coming up with a plan of action to target struggling clubs first, getting them back on their feet, then concentrate on a second phase of starting new clubs later, once all 12 of our clubs are functioning with healthy membership. We decided to start with the City Council of Cherokee. I contacted the city, and upon getting a spot on their next monthly meeting agenda, 
I contacted two of my cabinet members, including Zone Governor and Growth and Development Director, and a younger, motivated member of one of our stronger clubs that I had met at one of our Zone meetings. This individual was excited about Rotan and offered me his help during his own meeting if I was to set up a plan to grow a struggling club. He is now president of his home club and is one of the youngest presidents they have had in a while. I took him up on his offer and asked him if he'd be willing to meet me in Cherokee to attend one of their scheduled city council meetings to talk to the city council there about Rotan, the principles of Rotan, and most importantly, why he is involved in Rotan. He was so motivated about Rotan that in spite of having a busy work schedule the next day, he was willing to travel 120 miles from his home near Kansas City on a cold, icy December night, meeting me halfway, riding in the same car with me and the cabinet members the last 60 miles. Once there, the four of us talked to the council about Rotan, of which we found none of the councilmen were members. Let me interject here. This America's greatest secret thing is so true. Operation We Care, the five community service areas, partnerships with our other organizations, insurance at community events, all were brought out at this meeting, of which none of these things were known by these city council members. I want to stress that if you can find that younger motivated member, of which we did, that is in their late 20s and 30s of age, to go with you to these meetings, it is extremely helpful because they are enthusiastic and energetic. Their contribution can be very persuading in accomplishing your goal. In schools within rural communities, the school is usually the central hub of activity for that community. So after the city council meeting in Cherokee, I contacted the high school principal of the school who is now a member with his wife of the Cherokee Club and ask him if he would schedule the high school cafeteria for a community meeting and supper in January to invite all residents of Cherokee to learn about the Rotan Club, which we again later found was not only America's best kept secret, the Cherokee's best kept secret as the school administrator said he had worked in Cherokee schools for five years and hadn't heard that there was any organized community service organization active in town with the title. All he saw were people doing projects, community celebrations, and during the holidays, but didn't realize they were Ruritans doing them. After scheduling the supper, I went back to the city council clerk who was motivated by our talk at both the council meeting and later community meeting and joined Ruritan as a new member the following month of February. She offered to send invites out to all Cherokee residents through the city utility bills to list our upcoming Ruritan Community Supper, which we had set up. After she did this, I contacted that school's food service director to schedule and fix food for 50 people with the school's kitchen staff for that night as they were able to coordinate that better than we could. Payment to the school staff and for the food was provided through funds from our district treasury. You're gambling now at this point, as we didn't know how many would show up that night. But after advertising, also on the school sign, and knowledge that the utility bills were, have went out into the community, the four cabinet members, including myself, drove again the miles to Cherokee, riding to the event as a cabinet together, coordinating the evening program by talking and knowing what each member's role will be so the program will run smoothly and most importantly, not too long. Communication is the key to all of this. Once there, we were pleasantly surprised in that 25 to 30 people showed up. We feel that advertising a free meal, which our district treasury paid for, is a key to getting people there. As we had extra food left over, the food became a further reaching out tool as a community resident in Cherokee had a devastating fire recently was living in a homeless shelter and the food was very welcome. Chili and cinnamon rolls work well in the winter as this was the time of the year we did this and these food items can be frozen for later use of which the local club did use later. That night, each of us talked about our local clubs, projects our clubs do and why we are in Rotan to the residents of Cherokee that attended. And I used with Glenn's permission the PowerPoint Ian Calvin showed at the National Convention.
After the four speakers finished, including myself, we did not ask people that attended to join that night, but had a sheet passed out to the attendees of the community service areas Ruatan represents and ask them to fill out projects that you would like to see happen in Cherokee under them. The community attendees had time to think about projects after they saw the five community service project areas brought out in the PowerPoint and our talks about our four clubs. They signed their name with contact information with phone information and left them on the tables they were sitting at for us to pick up. Usually community leaders are school administrators, council men and women and mayors. We were blessed to see in this group all of these individuals at the meeting that night. This group of individuals, including school superintendent and high school principal and wife, signed the form encouraging us that their apparent interest showed us they cared to make Cherokee a better place to live through Ruatan. This provided Ruatan exposure to the community through this town's central meeting place, the school because now school activities that weren't sp being sponsored by a school organization could now be picked up as projects by the Rotan Club, which it wasn't before. We closed the community meeting with an invitation to all attendees to come to the next Cherokee Rotan Club meeting for the following month of February. As I want to again stress, having follow-up contact sheets is an important part in making this work. A couple of days before this meeting, I contacted by phone these attendees of the open house from those sheets and personally reminded and invited them to the upcoming Ruotan meeting. The night of the meeting, three of the four cabinet members went to this Cherokee meeting with membership sign-up sheets, hopeful to sign up members. After contacting open house attendees by phone one to two days before the Cherokee February meeting, I contacted the zone governor and growth and development director and along with myself traveled the distance once again to attend Cherokee's February meeting. We didn't know when we got there if any of this effort paid off. Upon arriving in Cherokee, to our pleasant surprise, the meeting location was populated with many of the open house attendees and some friends of the attendees of which came at their invitation and almost all were ready to join the club that night. We did sign up that evening, which energized us as a cabinet now to proceed to our next target club. We saw a club that had dwindled to three members increase to 18 members that night. As there were only three existing members there, the meeting for the evening of this new revitalized club was how to conduct a Ruritan meeting as almost all except the three didn't know how a meeting is conducted. Since then, we have unfortunately had the COVID-19 pandemic curtail many of our planned activities. But one thing I've noticed is that if the community is in a town that is incorporated, schedule a time to address the city council with one or two other Ruritans and yourself about the organization. We'd schedule the second club building activity in another school town, one of the four Ruritan school communities following this format. After the first meeting with the city council in the second community, we had a city council member sign up after the talk like we saw happen in Cherokee. City council members are excellent people to get on board. In this case, this member has lived in the community all of their life and is now bringing other family members on board, one of which lives in another Rotan community close by. In our Middle America district, community get-togethers are great places to talk Ruritan. We set up booths at these events, try to get a zone governor or myself at least to man the booth with members, and have flyers and sign-up sheets at these booths. One club offered free membership and dues paid for a new member if they signed up and put their name in a drawing. Have picture boards of activities your clubs are doing that you can take to get-togethers to show the community projects you sponsor and do. I stress in District 37 to make your club visible. Signage is important. A 50-year Row 10 member has a farm that adjoins U.S. Highway 54 in southeastern Kansas, outside of the first town in Kansas to charter a Row 10 club in 1966, Bronson. 
He is still active in this club and donated land to allow our district to construct a billboard on his farm along US 54. After obtaining approval from the Kansas Department of Transportation, we recently finished this project and hope to see this as a tool to attract membership. In closing, after attending my first leadership conference a couple of years ago as Lieutenant Governor, I went to a workshop in which the presenter said to increase club membership, you have to ask and invite people to come, and you may need to do this a multitude of times to get them there. I have been a Ruritan now for close to 10 years. My dad, who is 97 and a World War II vet, asked me to go with him to a meeting a multitude of times. Upon finally attending, I found the fellowship and various projects to be an enticing factor to make me want to join. But he didn't give up asking me to come. That is my point. I have since then invited my son, daughter, and son-in-law to attend meetings with me. All three of them now have joined clubs in the Rotan communities that they live in, with my son-in-law and daughter taking now president and secretary leadership roles. If all members would just simply ask others, Ruritan will grow. The possibilities are infinite. I wish all of you the best of luck and health during this uncertain time and hope to meet you personally at a leadership conference or national convention in the future. Thank you for your time.